Hey guys, just wanted to let you know that some of the material on this podcast today may not be suitable for all audiences. Thought you should know. And now, live from the Squared Circle Studios in Wausau, Wisconsin, it's the Squared Circle Podcast. And here are your hosts, Mac Petey. And the Squared Circle Podcast heavyweight champion, Spencer Hart. We are back here on the Squared Circle after a Thanksgiving break here on Spreaker.com and iTunes. How was your Thanksgiving, Mr. Max Beatty? I worked. <laughs> so did I. It was a very workful week. So <laughs> A workful week. Yes, but we are back here oh, on yeah. the Squared Circle. We've got a double dose of NXT to get to today. Yay! Yay! And Monday Night Raw. Boo. <laughs> NXT! Yay! Raw. Uh. <laughs> so why don't we start out with NXT from uh, two weeks ago. Like, technically last week. Yeah, okay. We are just going to cover cover. <laughs> we haven't even started this one, and we're already tripping over our tongue. Hi, welcome to the Squared Circle Podcast. Should we? <laughs> Can't I'm, I'm debating. Should we play the? Uh, should we play the open again? Well, it it is Becky Lynch's theme song. Okay, so. it again. Woo! Okay, we won't actually do it. <laughs> oh, all right, fine. <laughs> all right, so we, we're just going to cover a couple things today. Uh, the t- contract signing with Finn Balor and Samoa Joe. Everything about this was excellent. <laughs> a, God, this was so well done. I, and I was pretty impressed with how this actually went down. Uh, we start off, first of all, with Michael Cole in the ring. Michael Cole on NXT. Beloved by that crowd. I mean, I could not get over just... You know, the chorus of people chanting Michael Cole and expressing how much they loved him. It was it was, it was so touching, really. <laughs> oh, you're serious. Oh, oh yeah, completely <laughs> serious. I'm like, I'm probably the only human being on Earth who was kind of like, oh, cool, Michael Cole's going to be in charge. Well, he's not a, you know, worthless nitpicky heel, I guess, you know, covering for a heart attack will turn anyone baby face. Right. Hey, hey I like so, Michael I mean, Cole, so unless somebody else has a problem with it, you know. I mean, I get why people have issue with him, but whatever. So Finn Balor's in the ring, and Cole looks over at Finn and uh, says, uh, we're going to have you sign first, and then we're going to bring out Samoa Joe, and he's going to say his piece of whatever and then sign the contract. And, you know, Finn Balor cuts a promo, you know, scathing, digging into Joe, like, you know, come out here and face me like a man. And then Joe comes out, not a word, signs a contract, leaves. Balor's all, what the hell, man? And he, and he starts storming off and then, bam, out of no, so wild Samoa Joe out of nowhere, you know, just proving how much of an evil SOB that he is now. It was beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. It was beautiful. Perfection <laughs> brings a tear to my eye. Yes, it does. All right, yeah. So, yeah, other than that, you know, just Joe beats the hell out of Finn. <laughs> Which has Dude. been kind of like a recurring thing lately. Like, he's been, you know, choking him into unconsciousness with the Coquita Clutch. And then, you know, contract signing. I mean, yeah, he's always used some sort of advantage to sort of squirm his way to getting the upper hand to do it. But he's been knocking Finn down a lot. I mean... He- Makes me think that come NXT London, we may see a new champion. Be interesting. I mean, I mean, it, it certainly, I think, is the time for Finn Balor to possibly drop the title and make a main roster move. No, I, I'm sorry. I, you need to first of all, you need to put Bray Wyatt with somebody at least conceivably in the same realm as Bray Wyatt. And I think Finn Balor is going to be the person to do it. And I'm not talking like in the like next week. Oh, I'm talking no, 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 no. in the next coming months, like before WrestleMania. I think you see a pretty good feud start with Finn Balor and Bray Wyatt. I know I'm not entirely, you know, happy about it, but it's something that I think WWE, especially with Rollins, Orton. Everybody, Cesaro. <laughs> Half of the human population is apparently injured right now. I should have looked it up. Kevin Owens wasn't on Raw this week. I wonder if he's hurt too. Stop. I'm not kidding. No, no, <laughs> no. 
No, stop. Do not know. If he is in, if Kevin Owens is injured, I will cry in a corner. I swear to God. Yeah. It's not even cool. <laughs> Universe, God, whatever's listening, stop it. Yeah. So, uh, just the one other thing we want to cover about NXT last week. The oh WWE, I'm sorry, the NXT Women's Championship match. Bailey versus Ava Marie. I will say this. I thought this match was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I am now thoroughly convinced that Bailey isn't a human being. She has to be like proof of a of <laughs> godly existence because she drew something workable out of Eva Marie. Yeah, <laughs> she really did. Eva Marie. I don't want to say she looked good. No, but no, no, she no, no. she looked a lot better than she she usually does. Now, admittedly. I'm a better worker than Ava Marie, but still, she was definitely putting together a much better show. And I, and ordinarily, I feel a little bad about you know when someone's kind of green or they don't have all the pieces together, or even if they're just terrible. I feel kind of bad about saying, "Oh, well, the only reason they had a good match is because such and such and such carried them or got it out, got it out of them." I don't feel bad saying that this was a hundred and ten percent Bailey, and that Ava, she could have been wrestling a mannequin and probably would have been a better match, but still. I mean, and, and, and I think the the, the pair up with Nia Jax, I think, really oh, yeah. helped Ava Marie. And maybe this might bring something out of Ava Marie that <sighs> will stop <laughs> making us think that every time she enters the goddamn ring, that it won't we'll blow our brains out. <laughs> it won't. It really won't. Well, you know, we all knew that Bailey was going to win, but Bailey won. Bailey's win was much harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> There were yeah. there was a couple moments where I thought heel tactics were gonna kick in and the the numbers game were gonna start. Damn numbers game! Oh my god! And it almost happened. <laughs> almost, almost. And the, the funny thing is too, right before the match started, Charles Robinson came down. God, that was hilarious. It was hilarious. It, it makes me think that there's no there's a little bit of a corporate espionage going on here. Corporate espionage because she makes his pants tight apparently. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but hey, I love Charles Robinson, and the fact that he was involved in this match and a little controversial. Yeah, that made it fun. Yeah, it did. It made this a lot of fun, and, you know, Bailey wins, of course, with a super Bailey to belly off the top rope. God, that that just felt good seeing that. It's like, yes! And Ava had pinned Bailey for longer than three seconds. Oh, yeah. But the original referee got hurt, or I think Nia Jax pulled out the original referee. Did she pull him out? I think, yeah, she pulled him out and he landed on his back on, was the, that the, on, rough on the ramp. Bump? Was that the ref bump? Or I, th- I thought... It, there was two of them. There was the oh, first I remember one. The, yeah, there was the two ref bumps. And then Charles Robinson got hit somewhere and he went flying out of the ring. I want to say that time, uh, like, Bailey either accidentally knocked him or, like, Ava threw her into him or something like that. Yeah, it was, it was accidental, I think, from Bailey. Oh, okay. I think she was trying to do something with Ava and she pushed Ava into Charles Robinson. He went flying out of the ring and then Bailey hits the super Bailey to belly... Off the ropes, the original referee slides back in and makes one, the two, count three, one, two, yeah. three. And then Nia Jax just kicks the shit out of Bailey afterwards. Now, here's the thing. Because, you know, you go into, you know, this week. Uh, it's it's Friday when we're recording this, so two days ago on NXT. Like, on commentary, you know, you had, like, Corey Graves and everyone mention uh, the connection between Nia Jax and Evan Marie. But they didn't show anything, and they never had, like, Eva Marie show up. They didn't have Nia Jax cut a promo or mention her, so... Well, if you remember a few weeks ago on NXT, they were talking, and, you know, Ava walks up to Nia Jax, and she kind of does the... Yeah, po- the point little, at, yeah. yeah, the point to you, me kind of thing. And I didn't think it would lead to, lead to anything, but apparently it did. I mean, I don't know. I mean, because the, the issue I kind of see with it just from a storytelling logic angle is by attacking Bailey the way she did last week and the way they're kind of setting Nia Jax up, it's clearly positioning, she's positioning herself to gun for the title. So why would she continue palling around with Ava Marie when Ava Marie couldn't even get the job done with Nia Jax's help, which means she probably wouldn't be a good distraction bodyguard kind of thing if she actually did win the title so it's just 
like, it, did they suddenly realize that they had kind of, you know, screwed that storyline into a corner on accident and decided to just drop it? Or, I mean, is it going to... Is she going to bring her up later? I just It would feel kind of out of place if they suddenly just, oh, next week. Oh, yeah, by the way, I'm still working with Eva Marie. Really? You, you are? Mm, okay. Yeah, so that's really the only thing I want to cover about NXT last week. I mean, it's, you know, it's a week apart and us doing this podcast, usually if we miss something, it's not really worth yeah. talking about it because people have already seen it already. So let's move on to... My- <laughs> We could just keep talking about NXT. Uh, I wish we had. We, we, I wish we could. All right, it's it's going to be a Monday Night Raw sandwich with <laughs> NXT bread, except the NXT flavored bread is not going to be able to make up for the log of shit in the middle of the sandwich. Right. So let's move on to Monday Night Raw. You know, I had hope as soon as the show started because the New Day <laughs> came out, and I'm like, hey, <laughs> it's the New Day. Hey, we want some New Day. This is going to be great. And then they they brought out Sheamus, and it's like, okay, this could work. <laughs> Seamus 515 and I died oh a God. little inside. I completely forgot about that. Seamus for- How did Seamus you forget 515 that? says they I just tried kicked your arse. They tried so hard to just cram the shit in and crowbar it in. It was just uh, I completely uh, forgot about that. Thank you. I really thought and, I could get that on my head. Oh my god. And on top of that, it's just like you've got the new day who whether you love them or hate them, you've got to admit they've got an ability to connect with the crowd. They've got charisma, which, let's face it, whenever someone says in pro wrestling they've got the it factor, <laughs> little hint at Bobby Roode, they've got <laughs> charisma. They clearly have it. They have a lot of charisma. It says a lot when they can't salvage a segment, and good God, they couldn't do anything with this. It's... It, it was like when at Survivor Series when Sheamus came out and actually dropped the getting jiggy with it line and it wasn't like, oh, it's awkward. It's funny because it's awkward. No, it stopped being funny because of how badly you dropped that ball right there. And this is just... Yeah, so New Day throws Sheamus a champion celebration, I guess. We... And the fireworks are going off. Sheamus is... Holding his title up to the crowd and everybody's booing. Actually, I don't think they were booing. The crowd just went, as Adam from WhatCulture.com would put it, the crowd went mild. Well, I mean, there were some boos, but hey, remember, apparently this got uh, sent out, like Seamus, I guess, put it on Twitter or whatever, that he doesn't care what kind of reaction he's getting. Like, any reaction's a good reaction. Dude, if you're a babyface, the good guy, and the crowd is just hate-fucking you with booze, that's not a good thing. If you're getting kind of like a mixed reaction, that's not a good thing. If you get dead silence, if they're chanting shit at you that either has nothing to do with the match or is like almost a pr- an attack on you as a wrestler, you are not doing your job properly. If they're booing your character and chanting crap about your character because it's, you know, reactionary thing, you're doing a good job as a heel. If they're cheering you, even if it's, you know, just a bit and you're a babyface, that's a good reaction. I hate to say it, but anything much else is kind of a failure. So stop trying to spin everything and actually, oh, I don't know, fix your problems, but... I will say this. The the whole th- the thing that I like that came out of this whole opening segment with uh, New Day and Seamus and... Uh, Roman Reigns eventually coming to Superman Punch. Out of nowhere! <laughs> yeah, Superman Punch out of nowhere. Is that Roman Reigns would steal the title. That was well done. Yes, I enjoyed that. And they're kind of settling him into what I think they always should have. He doesn't... He, all of Monday Night Raw, he did speak, but he didn't, you know, wasn't very long, it wasn't long-winded, it was... Almost like the dialogue was just punctuating the living action scene that Roman Reigns is. They just let him be this cool, mostly quiet badass who punches people in the face out of nowhere. That is what he should have been, and that's what he is. And look at that. The crowd was cheering him. The crowd gave a crap about Roman Reigns. It's almost like when you play to his strengths, people like him. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And I think, I hope, I, I'll be honest, I like Roman Reigns. I like, oh, yeah. I, I like he's where he's going now, and I hope the crowd, I hope viewers finally get on board, because I really think it's Roman Reigns' time. Oh, yeah. Honestly, I'm completely 100% with this. I hope at TLC, WWE does the smart thing and continues this, you know, kind of mostly quiet, you know, walking badass moment. And have that kind of quiet walking badass moment win the damn title. Yeah, because if we would have had our podcast, say, last year around 
Royal Rumble, I would have shit all over Roman Reigns. Oh, God, me too. Yeah. It was way too early. He did not have it together. He And WWE was doing him no favors with the booking and then hyper push. Right. <laughs> super hyper push out of nowhere. Roman Reigns attempted to go Super Saiyan and it wasn't very effective. <laughs> but yeah, Roman Reigns would steal the title and then we would cut to a, we would go to break and come back from break. Roman Reigns would be standing with Dean Ambrose and the Usos, I believe they were there. Uh, no, the Usos came in la- uh, were later. Oh, that's right. Okay, so it was just him and Dean standing there. And, and you were talking about... I wonder, no, I wonder if... no, I, I don't remember who was standing next to him. But it wasn't I don't the think Usos, it was, I don't think it was Dean Ambrose either, because no, the authority comes in and says... Um, Roman says that he can't wait to face the... I forget what he called him. Uh, d- uh, he was some snarky remark. And yeah. He said, well, that champion doesn't want to wait till TLC... He wants his. He wants a match for the title tonight, but here's the stipulation: five minutes and fifteen seconds. You have to beat of him, beat him in, and if you don't, Dean Ambrose loses his <laughs> his title shot. Now here's the thing: perfect heel tactic from the oh, authority. Yeah. I love and also hate this idea, and I loved and hated it more in equal measure as the night went on. I loved it because, like you said, it's perfect. Heel tactic. That is beautiful. Plus, the authority was heel 100% throughout the show, which might be the most consistent episode of Raw in terms of the authority in ever. (laughs) Yeah, let's be real here. And again, like, very simple. Like, yeah, if you... And I like the idea of if you don't win the title in 5 minutes, 15 seconds, implying that he could still, you know, the match would continue and he could still win, but he wouldn't get the title. Thus, you know, it gives it the dusty finish thing if he doesn't clear the match in 5.15. Plus, it screws over a friend. It's really basic. You know, Ambrose loses his shot at the title later on in the night. If you don't, if your cousin, hey, Usos, if he doesn't win, you lose your number one contendership. You're out of the triple threat for the tag titles. It's perfect, except for one little problem. Well, I guess you could argue two, but let's focus on the big one. One little problem. He has to do it in five minutes, 15 seconds, which means if he loses, like, or if he either loses or doesn't beat him in five minutes and 15 seconds, all of this was completely kind of pointless in a way, but if he wins, we just got a five minute and fifteen second or less world title match on free TV. That's true. It was kind of one of those. I get you. You're, you're trying to do. You know, you're working within limits. I get that, but it was just sort of a. And plus, since they already set up the match at TLC, my brain just went, "Okay, he's either going to lose, win in over five fifteen. Or win by like DQ or count out or something. So that way, that way he act. What just happened there? I'm not quite sure what just happened, but continue right, anyway. your thought. Anyway, <laughs> or you know he wins by DQ or count out, and thus yay, dusty finish. He won, but he doesn't get the title. I mean, great idea, but I think if they had like if oh if you don't beat him in under seven minutes, like seven. It's sort of like a bit more of a workable time frame, I think. So that way you can, plus you could really stretch it a little bit more to the wire. And it, I don't know. I think adding those two extra minutes would have helped, but you got to work with what you're given. Yeah. So it, a great idea, but, uh, but it was, it was, it was okay. I, I thought it, you know, I love the authority as heels. Oh yeah. Cause they, <laughs> they just have that snotty little bitchy you kind just, of, yeah, you just look at him and go, I fucking hate you so much i love it <laughs> i don't it's, know why god we are sick people wrestling fans aren't we <laughs> <laughs> so we move on to the first match of the night and it, it's like wwe creative listens to our podcast of course <sighs> dolph ziggler versus tyler breeze i don't like the finish <laughs> i don't like it <laughs> i don't like it don't want it oh. that was actually pretty good yeah, like I said, like I said on the program ten days ago, the tall, the tall, tall, tall Tigler. Yeah, tall Tigler. Tall Tigler. <laughs> Yay! The Dolph Ziggler Tyler Breeze match at Survivor Series would have served much better at a Monday Night Raw. Yeah, it wasn't a pay per view caliber match. No, and this is why because it served perfectly on Monday Night Raw. Yup. Ish. <laughs> Well, like I said, I, I I don't like the finish. I, I I don't like who they pick to win. I'm sorry. That sounds immature and whiny and devoid right. of any intellectual merit, but it's true. I think that I I don't know. I think I think a completely different finish, you know, 
oh, I don't know, maybe someone who lost, but, you know, maybe in this case, this scenario, they do a little bit of that winning thing. Yeah, <laughs> so they go right back to burying Tyler Breeze. <laughs> Because, you know, he didn't lose enough on NXT. You know, I can, I'm I, not bitter. I'll be completely honest. You know, it's been four days. I'm trying to remember how the how the match ended. Oh, God. I think it ended clean. I think it just ended with a uh, oh, yeah. famouser. Uh, no, it was a super kick. Was it a super, super yeah, kick? Yeah, because yep. like, oh, he beat it with his own finisher. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Somebody get the shovels. So the next part here, uh, I'll be completely honest. I... I wasn't a big fan of Monday Night Raw again this week, and I left to go get food in the middle of Monday Night Raw. <laughs> during, it was actually during the Dolph Ziggler. That, that would be why I couldn't remember how it, how it ended. I didn't see the ending. <laughs> so I, I'm trying to actually remember right now, and I was sitting there watching it. What came after this match, like right after? We get to Miz TV. Yeah, now I remember. Yep. <laughs> and Rusev is on, and... Guess who's back? Lana. Yay. And, and I'm not buying heel. it. I'm not buying it. I'm sorry. I, I, I I'm sen- sorry. I sense a rant within you, I, my friend. I'm sorry. I <sighs> Lana with Rusev, it just it doesn't cut it for me. It's the stereotype that I, I don't like with women, that they must serve this big, huge, ginormous guy. And just must do every single one of his biddings. With when Lana was with Dolph Ziggler, it first of all she was face, of course, of course. But she was also that happy-go-lucky girl, and the crowd loved it. But now, since WWE couldn't hold on to fucking kayfabe because Rusev and Lana got engaged, fine, they got engaged. Who cares? Go on with the storyline. At least keep Lana with Dolph. I don't care if the the storyline died. Keep Lana with, you know, who the crowd and who the viewers are going to like over this, you know? Exactly. I mean, best example I can possibly cite is, you know, there's plenty of TV shows I love. I love Supernatural. Both of the two lead actors in real life have children and are married. Both of the characters they play are single and have no kids when we'll go with just one of them jensen ackles got married and his you know first daughter was on the way they didn't suddenly have his character get married and have a kid or at least get a girlfriend or something they realize that they can separate fiction from reality and it's not like wwe hasn't done that a billion times already i don't and on top of that if you're Going to have them get together just because they're together in real life. Why not take this opportunity to, I don't know, turn Rusev face? Like maybe have him see the error of his ways and try to actually win her back and woo her so it becomes this kind of cute little romance story. They get back together and you have someone with Rusev's admittedly prodigious wrestling talent as a guy drawing cheers. Right. It's like the last four months or so with the whole... Dolph Ziggler, Lana, Rusev, and Summer Rae storyline and everything that happened with it just didn't fucking happen. And it, it, that's what upsets me is that... Default back to zero. Right. We're right back to square one and nobody gives a shit about Lana. Yep, pretty much. She's she's a character, but like hell, I wasn't even enjoying it when they... Like, I was, I was okay with most of it until she jumped with Dolph Ziggler. Mostly because at that point, all of a sudden, the story shifted from being about Lana and Rusev to Ziggler and Rusev, and Lana kind of just riding shotgun in her own story. And now it's kind of happened all over again, except now she's not even riding shotgun. She might as well just be sitting in the back seat, and Rusev is just driving. Right, so we're back to square one with Dolph Ziggler, I'm sorry, with uh, Rusev and Lana. Yay. And just nobody, nobody gives a shit. Ryback and Rusev in a match. Honestly, I didn't care about Neither this match. Did I. I. I didn't watch it. I was coming back from Culver's. Well, it, here's the thing. Here's the thing I didn't get. First off, the match is boring as hell. But regardless, well, it sounds boring on paper. <laughs> oh God, the, the, it, the it match ended, on it the match on paper, out. dude. The match on paper was more interesting than the match on TV. But <laughs> here's the thing that gets me. Like, go back and like listen to some of the shit that Ryback was saying when he first comes out. Some of it is like, okay, yeah, it makes sense he's saying this crap because, you know, Rusev and Lana are ugh, heels again, but whatever. Some of the stuff he says, it's like, 
dude, that's not cool. You're kind of being a prick. You're kind of being an asshole. And then what's the finish of the match? Ryback bumps into Lana. She hits the steps, and she possibly gets hurt. So Rusev, oh, hey, you know what? The woman I care about is more important than one match. So he gets himself counted out because he's too busy taking care of her. Meanwhile, Ryback kind of stands around and acts like, yeah, I want a match. And it's just like, and I'm just sitting here thinking, wait a minute, who's the heel here again? <laughs> right. It, it's, like, what it's, just it's happened? Another, it's another situation of haste. It's another big show. Exactly. It's like Rusev is might be this kind of douche nozzle, but he cares about someone. He's willing to put aside his own needs for them. Meanwhile, Ryback comes out and is, might as well have just been Nelson months from The Simpsons going, ha ha, you're in love. And it's just, what the hell? Yeah, so Rusev wins, or Ryback wins over Rusev via countout. Yay, let's move on to something way more interesting. Dude, dude, if I was smashing my face into the wall, that would be more interesting. <laughs> I don't even remember what is next. <laughs> so we come, we go to break, we come back, and in the ring are four tables under Claus, and we have the Dudley boys in the ring cutting a promo for TLC. You go ahead and talk about this, man, because I've got some mixed feelings. I've hoped to God this is going to be a tables match. I really do. So the Dudley boys are cutting a promo for tables, ladders, and chairs for their uh, apparently impending tag team match with the Wyatt family. And then we hear the doom, 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 doom. Doom 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 music and then the Bray or the Bray Wyatt family <laughs> the Bray Wyatt <laughs> the uh, the Wyatt family comes out standing on the on the uh, stage area by the Titan Tron and when the lights go out or the Wyatt family cuts a little bit of a promo that hey we're better than you la di da di da and then the lights go out and I think we're going to break and then I hear the ring, 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 thing with the Wyatt entrance. Mm-hmm. And then the White family standing right next to the ring, and Bray standing still on the stage. And then the Dudley boys say, Hey! You've got your family, and we've got ours! And all of a sudden... And now for one brief shining moment, I just sort of went, Spike Dudley? Yeah, I thought that's who I mean, like, be. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, there are, you know, several members who are retired, and sadly a few members of the uh, Dudley family who are dead, but my mind went, like, Spike? Big Dick Dudley, what the hell's going on? And then, well, keep, please continue. Tommy Dreamer from ECW. A man who's known for sweatpants, crying, and getting kicked in the Dreamers. Hey, I'm excited for this now. <laughs> keep going, man. I'll, I'll, get my, so, I'll get my words in there soon. Dreamer, Tommy Dreamer, enters the arena from the, the crowd, apparently. Yeah. Enters with a trash can full of kendo sticks and uh, a lot of other shit. And just <laughs> sets up a six-man tag team match between the Dudley Boys and Tommy Dreamer versus the Wyatt family. Whew. I'm excited for TLC for this one. I mean, on paper, I'm excited for it. Like, on paper, it's like, holy crap, it's the Dudleys and Tommy Dreamer, and they're going up against the Wyatt family. That's really cool. But? But after, I, I said it before, um, Survivor Series, at least something to the effect Don't of you this. ever bring that up on this program again. I, I don't have a choice. I have to, at least just for this explanation. <laughs> I know it is a black mark on our history, but it, we, move, we will move on eventually. After the pay-per-view that shall be, before the pay-per-view that shall not be named, um, I said something to the effect of that, you know, at this point, with as much damage as has been done to Bray Wyatt's character and the Wyatt family, if he just gets kind of trashed at that show, he's kind of dead in the water for me. And, well, he kind of did. And I'm not exactly, like, at this point, I want to be a fan of the Wyatt family, but the WWE's killed them for me. Okay, that that's still not a bad issue. The biggest issue for me, and this is going to sound really weird, is Tommy Dreamer. I wouldn't be saying this if I hadn't actually spent some time over the last two years watching TNA and watching this man attempt to wrestle. No offense to Tommy Dreamer. The man used to be amazing back in the day, but this guy, um, he's definitely showing his age. He kind of moves like I think you'd expect someone's dad to move. And the sweatpants, which now appear to be sweatpants as designed by Hot Topic, <laughs> that isn't helping much either. So it's sort of like, oh, so instead of being like, yeah, I get to watch the Wyatts and the Dudleys have this awesome tables match. Instead, it's so the Dudleys, along with the help of basically a mobile 
half corpse in sweatpants are going to go beat the crap out of the goat herder people. <laughs> I I I can't even I can't even like switch something on to like gauge how excited I am because the needle would break off. It's negative. I I can. I just well, you realize this is essentially setting up Team WWE versus Team to ECW, pretty much, right? <laughs> Say it. Fuck! I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm all right. Fuck! I'm okay. Really, I I won't I won't do that again. I'm just. God. Should we start the program over? No, I'm good. I'm good. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I can get my shit together. <laughs> God, that is. Please don't do that, WWE. You rubbed your victory in all of our noses for long enough. <laughs> Was the invasion not enough? Yeah. <laughs> so they. Bastards. So the Dudley Boys and Tommy Dreamer and the Bray Wyatt. Oh God, he did it again. <laughs> again. The Wyatt family. The Bray Wyatt. Enter a no no contest decision. Nobody wins. Nobody loses. Let's move on. No, no, no. We lost. The audience no, lost. No, we didn't. I felt like I lost. Okay. <laughs> we we certainly lost during the next match. What was the next one again? The United States champion Alberto Del Rio versus Gold Dust. I every wanna time like I, this one. Every time I see his freaking finisher, Alberto Del Rio's, I hate it even more. You know, and, like, I just think, like, a couple weeks ago, I was like, you know what you see? Oh, my God, he did the double foot stomp in the tree of woe. He's doing different finishers. This is awesome. Like, two weeks in a row of him doing the double foot stomp into the tree of woe. Okay. You know, it's like, okay, that's a pretty brutal-looking finisher. And after a while, my brain kicked in, and I started thinking about it. This finisher is really terrible. It requires so much setup. The person would have to be unconscious for it to really work, and then they're not going to be able to hold themselves. So it's just, ah, and plus, I'm sorry, Gold Dust, he's got, like, Sith Lord makeup. I don't want to see a <laughs> Sith Lord lose to Alberto Del Rio. That's bullshit. Yeah, so, I'm sorry. It, it just takes fucking forever to set up his finisher. And to be completely honest, I think he was able to get that finisher. I think Gold Dust may have botched. Uh, pretty sure he did. I'm pretty sure he did because he fucking, <laughs> he crotched himself. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, like, Goldust has been on a roll since he came back, so it's just one mess up, so it's it's not that big a deal, but at the same time, dude grouched himself. How do you feel about Jack Swagger coming back? I feel like this entire angle and feud would make so much more sense if he was the heel and had the U.S. belt and Del Rio was the face gunning for it. Okay, so explain this to me, because I've heard this quite a few times on the internet over the last few weeks. Shoot. What the hell is a flag match? Okay, flag match is, it depends on who you're going to ask, whether or not it's one of the more gimmicky but fun or just notoriously stupid match ideas. Uh, it's very, very similar to the object on a pole match. The idea is that each wrestler starts in a corner. Their corners have a flag. Uh, you basically have to knock the other person down long enough to shimmy up the flagpole and grab the flag. You grab the flag, you win. Uh, some promotions have done essentially a little, a little flag football approach where you know they have the flag attached to the waistband of the trunks. This turns out to be a really stupid idea since wrestling tends to pull things off you like that. So usually they stick with the flag on a pole thing it's like i remember kind of really sorry <laughs> anyway i remember kind of digging the match type when i was a kid because i mean it was like oh you gotta it's almost like a ladder match you gotta beat them down long enough for you to be able to climb up and grab something but could eh. we be heading towards that with tlc so what mm -hmm. like an american flag in jack swagger's corner and a mex american flag in the in Del Rio's? That's what I've been... I've heard, That's what I've heard the rumors to be, and is... I... I guess, I mean... Wait, at Extreme Rules? No. Okay, because... Setting up for something, not at TLC. I mean, I meant, but... I meant TLC, I meant TLC, because I... I, I wouldn't... <laughs> I'm losing my voice. Easier, right? I don't, yeah, I don't think at TLC. I would think something more like Rumble. Maybe even Fastlane. Maybe, I Because I, I mean, don't think you could hold this feud until <laughs> Extreme Rules. Well, you I, got... Well, my mind... First of all... You've got John Cena coming back in less than 
Does he come back before TLC? No, he comes back after. He comes back the 21st, if I believe, against... That's the thing, too. You know, when we were on this show a month ago talking about Hell in a Cell, yeah. um, we had discussed that John Cena was scheduled to reappear with against Sheamus and defend his title. Yeah. That's the other thing. Uh, unless that is has changed... What's uh what's going on here? You know? I, I Something's don't know. gonna happen. They're trying to build this feud with Del Rio and uh Alberto Del Rio, but you've got John Cena coming back in let's see here, uh sixteen days. Shit, this is barely <laughs> over two weeks. Let's start the countdown. Hang on, I gotta find my Cena sounder. No. Uh, I can hear this I can hear everything you do now. <laughs> don't do this. Yeah, you can actually hear everything that no. we're t- we're talking. You don't do this. <laughs> don't you dare. Start the countdown. I will mention the pay per view. Oh my god, don't do it. I will okay, mention okay, Rusev's okay, nickname. Okay, I'm sorry. I won't do it. Yeah, there sorry. We go. Right. I've got ammo too. I've got ammo so, too. But I'm just I mean, curious as to where the hell this thing's going with Alberto Del Rio and Jack Swagger. I don't know. I think I hate to say this because John Cena did a phenomenal job with the U.S. title, but and I'm I'm not saying this because oh I don't want the belt on Cena. I don't think he should re get the U.S. championship because okay he drops the belt to Seth Rollins mostly because they just wanted to say hey we had a dual U.S. world champ good good for you uh, and then he gets it back like a month later. It did so much damage to the glorious momentum he had rolling with that title. Like, had he not lost that belt, his loss to Del Rio would have had way more impact. Like, oh yeah, it had impact because it was very fast, it was sudden, it was to an opponent we never thought we'd see in WWE again, but it would have it would have been like almost main event huge if he had never dropped it. And just setting up a little bystander feud with Swagger just for him to drop the belt to Cena again. I mean, the dude would have to go on this monolithic, long-as-hell title reign with it, just crazy-ass balls long for it to mean anything again. And I mean, I don't know. There's got to be something they can do with it. I have no idea what they plan on doing with him. I I mean, you know, we both watch watch uh, What Culture. I'm kind of actually hoping that they just decide, okay, we're bringing him back. It's going to be really close to WrestleMania season. Let's just friggin' do it. Cena and Undertaker. I mean, hell, I think most people who are wrestling fans, even people who despise Cena even to this day, would probably be like, yeah, I'm going to watch that. Yeah, any day of the week, I I would. And if you want to talk about Cena needing something, he's wrestling The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Dude doesn't need a belt at that point. Win, lose, or draw... That is going to be one of the biggest moments of Cena's career. Yeah, he's pretty much wrestling the Undertaker for his final match. And that's all, but all oh, but yeah. you know confirmed. That, oh yeah, it's 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 not that Cena needs him. It's not that the Undertaker needs to rest, wrestle John Cena for his final match. It's just something that is going to happen. Yeah, you know, they haven't wrestled what since twelve years ago at Backlash. Something God, like was that. Was that backlash? I just remember it was the uh, the. Uh, I just remember really liking that feud and that you know, like where he pissed on the Undertaker's grave. I was like, whoa. I mean, so, uh, but yeah, I think it has. I think that was the last time that either of them faced off against each other. So, man, I read an interesting article a couple days ago on yeah. uh, allwrestlingnews.com. dot com. About popped over there a few times. Yeah, uh, Vince Russo in an interview had said that they may be forced to provide edgier content for WWE. What was his rationale? Well, because the fans are shitting all over everything that they do. Well, here, and my counter to that would be NXT. NXT is not edgy. They are PG through and through. They are very family-friendly. I mean, for crying out loud, Monday Night Raw says bitch, damn, hell, bastard, stuff like that. They have more accidental and Apparently, according to some rumors, even a little bit of blading going on, way more blood. It's a far, I'm really reluctant to use a term like edgier, grittier, more mature, uh, just generally speaking, more graphic. But it kind of is, all of those things, more so over NXT. 
NXT, again, very clean, very family-friendly product. I mean, their most brutal matches have been the Iron Woman match and probably the NXT Championship ladder match. Not a drop of blood. No spots that were, like, you know, attitude era. You're picking your jaw up off the popcorn-covered floor or anything like that. So, I mean, I don't think that WWE needs to get edgy. That was a big problem with especially the kind of mid to latter, some of the latter portions of the Attitude Era, where they just went completely insane. They stopped. You'd have almost every single match on Raw end in like a double disqualification or absolute just massive brawls. I mean, everything was just TNA, and I don't mean the wrestling promotion. There was tons of blood, chair shots every friggin' five minutes. It's a Band-Aid. It's car crash TV. It just it draws eyeballs because it's like, holy crap, what the hell's going to happen next? But it's not engaging them. NXT engages the audience. I think if they just followed NXT's footsteps, you know, stories that make sense and are, yeah, they're simple and have been done a million times, but you throw just enough of a twist into it or just write it well enough and give it to wrestlers who are not just great athletes but also good actors... And you create compelling angles that lead to drama, emotional investment, and really, really fun matches. And everyone loves NXT, not a drop of blood. Right. So, I mean, it could work, it could help, but... You know, and he said, you know, he had heard some rumblings from USA Network to say, you know, we might have to start getting more edgy and that, you know, if that thought continues in that direction, we may be heading for a showdown between... WWE and USA Network. Yeah. So, and, I mean... You know, and you know, he says, look at the other shows that are on USA Network from 9 to 11 at night. They're not puppet shows. No. And, and, and that's, a great, that's a great point, is WWE, if you look back at the last 10, 15 years... Yeah. ...has gotten a lot, you know, it really is the PG era. It's yeah. just looking back at the Attitude Era now, looking at, the, you know, this era. Is it worth getting edgier? Like, let's let's say here, um, Hell in a Cell. Yeah. You know, you and I had talked about the use of blood yeah. in, in matches. I, I, I don't like it often, but no, in, in a match, especially with Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker, it... It added that element of this actually looks like they're kicking the shit out of each other. Shit has gotten real. Right. But if you're bleeding during every single match, it's, exactly. that's something I don't want to see. Exactly. It's it's kind of like how a lot of people have that, you know, that fondness, especially if they lived in the Jersey and New York areas, for old school classic ECW, Eastern Championship Wrestling that became Extreme Championship Wrestling. And, well, don't get me wrong, I've got some okay memories of going back and watching a lot of stuff uh, on reruns or that other people had, you know, recorded on VHS. And then, of course, when WWE starts releasing some of the library way back when, the a lot of it I really would not look back fondly on, like, a lot, like in terms of, like, the edgy content. Like, that whole thing with Reed Flair. Oh, I can't believe I'm... No, no, I'm bringing it up for a reason. I can't believe I'm going to say this, and trust me, anyone who lived in the that area of the Eastern Seaboard and watched ECW pretty regularly would be able to confirm this. ECW, back in the day, yeah, the mention of Reed Flair like that, that's almost tame compared to... Some, like, Rhino's original gimmick was about a hair's breadth away from him just being a straight-up rapist. Wasn't there so, a guy? What was his name? He's just an absolute nut job in W or in ECW. Oh, the name is that's gonna, gonna come. You need to be way more specific. An I absolute got nut job. New Jack. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> I've seen videos of him. Uh, there was a couple top ten videos on WhatCulture.com. Yeah, where New Jack was like the top ten craziest wrestlers ever. Yeah, and New Jack I think was on the list three times. Yeah, that's not surprising. New Jack. Whether it's kayfabe, whether it's kayfabe, legit, or a combination of both, New Jack, um, New, New Jack is, uh, how do I be? Well, didn't he? How do like, I be politically correct about this? Unique. <laughs> <laughs> didn't he like crack a kid over the head with a chair? I've heard the rumor. Yes. Oh boy. No, but it, it's like, for, I mean, for crying out loud, um, like Sandman. Sandman would come to the damn ring, 
chugging beers. And by the beer he starts on when he's at the top of those stairs is probably like his sixth or seventh in the last 20 minutes. By the time he'd get down to the ring where he'd do his iconic, you know, bashing himself in the forehead to hard bust himself open, he admitted it. Lots of other people admitted it. He couldn't feel that because of how hammered he was. And this was on national television. Speaking of hard way bleeding, I know we've never brought this up on our program before, but did you see TNA's WrestleCade? No, I didn't. Did you at least see the clip of Matt Hardy getting busted open with Jeff Jarrett's guitar? Yeah, I heard. I I I'd heard about it, and then a couple days after I'd originally heard about it, which I heard about it the night it happened, um, I finally got around to watching like some decent video footage of it, and I'm just like, how hard could this hit possibly be? I haven't seen any. Oh, oh my God, that just. I'm surprised Matt wow. Hardy isn't dead. <laughs> I am surprised Matt Hardy isn't dead either. Jesus, Jeff. Yeah. I mean, I know you've never been the best wrestler in the world, but the goal here is to not almost murder somebody. I know it looks like you're killing people sometimes, and, well, you know, The Undertaker and Coffins and all that. I get it, but still. Yeah. So, all right, back to Monday Night Raw. We've got. But I liked that tangent. It wasn't yes, about Raw. I know. We have to get back to it. I'm sorry. Well, I I liked one thing on Raw. I mean, I liked it before they ruined it. I liked that little bit in the back with, like, Becky Lynch and Charlotte where Becky's all, hey, we should have a match just to, like, get this crap out of our mouths. Just cleanse the palate. Have a fun match. It doesn't even have to be for the title. And then they ruined it. But I did like that part in the back. Yay! Becky Lynch is theme. But it's just like, you know, everyone else is Sasha Banks, and I love Sasha Banks. She's awesome, but... My girl is Becky Lynch, but it, I like that little bit in the back because, like, their acting was really solid. The actual dialogue was well done. I liked that that idea of, hey, we're friends. We've been through all this crap. There's all these distractions. Let's just nice, pure, straight up, good old fashioned wrestling match. Get it out of our system. Just have fun. I'm like, this is awesome. This is great. There really should have been a little thing that appeared on screen that said tragedy striking in 10, 9. And because, <laughs> oh my God, why? Yeah, so well, let, let's get back to the tag team match. After that, the Usos versus the Lucha Dragons for the number one contender spot for the WWE Tag Team Titles. I hated this in a like kayfabe sense. Like, damn it, how dare you ruin this match? But you know, the other half of my brain is going triple threat, threat triple, triple threat. threat. Yes. So it's like, and yeah, that's that is how you do a good. Match. That is how that is how you do a good run in finish. That is how you piss an audience off and hype them up at the same time. Yeah, I agree. So the Usos and the Lucha Dragons battling it out. The New Day on commentary. God, I had to listen to them for more than 30 seconds. Oh, who <laughs> on you. <laughs> you know you love them. You I'm just getting admit there. It. I just, I'm, I got to remember that they nonstop talk. Yeah, they, they, I can, don't get me wrong. I can get how that can get tiresome, but I still, I still love them. Yeah, so the stop. With the freaking unicorn horn. Never! <laughs> it's for all those injured wrestlers. So, right before the match ends, the new... The new shows. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> the new so All right. Usos right. turn heel. Join the new day. Let's, uh, let's start the show over here. Say, hold on. How would you feel about that? The Usos turn heel and join the new day. We're going to get to who the New Day joined at the end of this program, and I'm pretty sure the computer that's controlling all this is not going to survive my rant. <laughs> yeah. So the we have a triple threat match confirmed. Well, okay. Let's sort not get of. ahead of ourselves. It, yeah. it, it, triple threat match scheduled to happen. And now the Usos would be involved if Roman Reigns beats Sheamus in 5 minutes and 15 seconds during the main event. Again, while well, there's still the issues with the length of time, this is just so freaking well done. Yes. And the Usos, they didn't actually have any, like, they didn't say anything to Stephanie or around her when she was doing that in the back. The looks on their faces, though, they did a great job telling and selling this story with just their facial expressions, like their shoulders slumping. That was perfect. You know, and, and just for a second, before the, the Usos were involved in this whole storyline, too, had Dean just been the one whose title match would have been in jeopardy. I think that could have set up a pretty good heel turn. For Dean? Yeah. Think about it. If Dean's the only one involved, and he's got Dean, or Roman's got five minutes and 15 seconds to beat Sheamus, 
And we're getting down to below th- one minute, 45 seconds, 30 seconds. What's the only thing to do to save your title match? Kick the crap out of Roman Reigns. Yeah, blast him with it. Well, yeah, definitely. Actually, something I just kind of thought of that could also work. Like, you know, it's getting down to that wire and he realizes, hey, I'm going to get screwed here. A way that they could have him atta- attack Roman Reigns and still have him stay a babyface if they want to do that is he literally just walks into the ring, looks at the ref, and just kind of like maybe a little harder than normal, you know, pat on the back, slaps Roman across the back. Roman's just like, what turns? And I was like, what the hell? And Dean just looks at the ref and the ref is just sort of, you know, fine and DQs him. And then Roman confronts him and he's like, what? You were about to lose. No offense, I didn't want to lose my title shot, but I also didn't want to, you know, physically assault my friend. So, on the back, I knew if you knew about it, you'd get pissed. I mean, I'm just saying, that would be an interesting angle to take, too. I think the right. heel turn would be easier, but... Right, so... All right, we'll move on to the... Jeez, oh, easy. <laughs> I can't hold on to things. We'll move on to the Divas match. Brie Bella versus... <laughs> oh my god, can you stop doing that? No. <laughs> Miss Sasha Banks. Hey, if Becky wasn't around, Sasha Banks. <laughs> Actually, if Becky and Bailey weren't around, then I'd be all over Sasha Banks. But they're, all three of them exist, so it's okay. That is not how I meant it. Stop looking at me like that. Although, <laughs> admittedly, out of context. All right, all right. Easy, easy. <laughs> Family program. You're the one who put the warning before this <laughs> true. episode. We have started putting the warning in our show. If your now. children are still awake, you're about to wish they weren't. <laughs> no, no, no. Kids, you're about to learn some shit today. <laughs> <laughs> Jabroni, do you like pie? <laughs> if you smell! Uh, I did that at work a couple days ago. We're making really? Pop- yeah, we're making popcorn at, East- at uh, my job, East Bay. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> my one of my one of the trainers, Alex, was making popcorn. And I, I can smell it, so I walk into the break room and I go, If you smell what Alex is cooking! And he looked at me like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> oh, it's okay, man. I just I did a lot of some illegal substances right before coming into the room. Just ignore me. It's so, all right. Yeah, Sasha Banks versus Brie Bella. And it, this match it, made me laugh. Well, this match actually made me realize something. What's that? Did I miss where the hell Nikki Bella went? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, I didn't even notice that. I just realized Nikki Bella's injured. Are you fuck are you, you can't, she really is taking time off from WWE due to a neck injury, but there is no official word as of yet from the professional <gasps> wrestling promotion WWE as to the extent of her injury or how long the other half of the Bella Twins will be out. What? Dun 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 dun. <laughs> Oh, my God. What the hell is in the water over at WWE? Okay, look. I don't like the Bella Twins at all. I don't. But at the same time, I don't wish physical harm on other people just because I don't feel they're good at doing a particular job. And And also at the same time, what the fuck is going on? Why is everyone, whether I like them or not, getting hurt? What the hell? You think that John and Nikki are off somewhere getting married? You know what? If, if that's what this all is, it's sort of like, if that's what this all is, you know what? More power to them. I hope it's a happy marriage. I hope they stay married until they're both friggin' dead. Whatever. That's great. Could you pick a less catastrophically inconvenient time to, you know, confirm your love for each other? My entertainment is more important than your emotions, okay? Case in point, Rusev and Lana. <laughs> Stop it. I, I said case in point. Okay, oh, okay, okay. But Okay, now when I said before that this match made me laugh, though, it wasn't because it was bad. Honestly, I thought it was okay. It was an okay match. The part that made me laugh, and I mean, I actually missed like almost a probably good 30 seconds of the match because I was laughing so hard, is because they tried to make it so... They tried to make it look like Brie Bella. Brie Bella. A.K.A. The Bella who really sucks <laughs> is somehow a credible and legitimate opponent for Sasha. I'm going to make you tap the fuck out, Banks. This is a woman 
who doesn't just put you in a cross face, she lung blowers you first. And brave out is supposed to bring it to her. And I'm just sitting here just, I am dying. I am just, I'm almost on the floor holding my sides, dying. Look at the bright side. With Nikki Bella out, we don't have to hear, come on, Nikki, every seven seconds during a match. Okay, if they're getting married, they can totally go on honeymoon for like a couple months, and I'd be okay with that right now. Congrats, guys. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, don't get me wrong. John, you should pro- I can't believe I'm about to say this, but John, you should probably come back. Your your wife, you know, she can take, she take some time off. John. John. If you're listening, John, lock it down and get the hell back! Also, if you're listening, you should totally give us a shout out on Raw. That would be really, really awesome. If you're listening, what the hell is wrong with you? You have better shit to do! (laughs) If you're listening, dude, seriously, tighten up that springboard stunner. What the fuck? Even Stone Cold (laughs) said on the podcast, dude, he, he called you the hell out, man. Shape up. Anyway, getting back on point. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Let's, do, 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 do. let's move on to the main event. Roman no. Reigns. <laughs> no. We have Not to. doing this. We have to. You, 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 you walk out. Don't do it. Fine. <laughs> continue. Roman Reigns versus W. Oh, I gotta, that's right. I have to introduce him the right way. Roman Reigns versus the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Sheamus. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Rollins get like a robotic knee or something. Or, Wait a like, minute, no, like this wasn't the main thing. event, was it? Yes, it was. No, this no, this came at the top of uh, the third hour. Oh shit, that's right. Right, because the main event was uh, the tag match. <sighs> God, that's right. And what? How did the? But how did this match go down? Oh, it went down with it. Roman Reigns won in less than five minutes, 15 seconds, which so, means everyone keeps their title shots, but it was by disqualification. Yeah, why don't we do this then? We're going to skip that one for now. We're going to move on to the Divas match. You mean the one that pissed me <sighs> off? Oh, the one that pissed everyone off. Oh, boy. We have the Divas champion, Charlotte, versus... All right, let's move on. My girl! <laughs> Oh, Becky, you need to have the title on you soon. <laughs> they need to just change and that shit into the women's title and give it to Becky, and then she calls it the Irish title, and I'm just happy forever. Here's my problem with this fucking thing. Shoot. Is that Ric Flair came down with Charlotte and was a prop during the entire match. Yeah, that's not my They only problem. degraded a, first of all, a two-time... WWE World or WWE Hall of Famer. I don't know how the hell that happens. And you no, know, not just you know a two-time Hall of Famer, but sixteen-time the- World Heavyweight Champion. Well, hell, I mean, it could go higher than that. And keep in mind that most of his title reigns were back when there was kind of a meritocracy to it. Where oh yeah, you want to get pushed, do better, so you can actually say he earned a lot of those. Seamus, Seamus, we're talking to you. Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> the message, Seamus, is that you suck. Give up the belt. Seriously. Anyway. Yeah, so... Wow, we're just having fun tonight. <laughs> maybe a little bit, yeah, but like you said, Ric Flair. Rick, fucking Flair is a prop. Ugh. I was, you know, I was happy with this match. This match was a very good match on paper. You know, until the end. Until the end, where everything went to hell. And I'll be honest, it was a very good heel tactic. Just don't use a two-time WWE Hall of Famer as a fucking distraction. Also, I'm sorry. Also, it's just just a little bit, you know, personal thing. But um, you know, maybe maybe if you're trying to push someone as being the focal point of your divas revolution, and you know, you're trying to do this thing where you're positioning her at the top and. You know, you've got a couple of female heels running around, like, you know, Sasha Banks. Maybe if the whole face thing isn't working, you actually consider fleshing out the character a little bit more. Or, oh, I don't know, uh, you know, taking a step back, maybe changing the gimmick, you know, experimenting a little bit instead of, you know, deciding to say, no, fuck that, and just basically shitting on her character! I'm only a little bit angry about this fucking bullshit! 
<laughs> but it could be a lot worse, you know. It's not like someone's shoving, actually shoving a knife into the depths of my soul and twisting it while pushing upward. I mean, it could be worse. Right. It could be kicking me in the balls at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so, <sighs> Charlotte wins against Becky Lynch. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Char- Charlotte wins with Becky Lynch on a, on a distraction from her father, Ric Flair, on a, on a weak roll-up pin. One, two, three. <laughs> fucking job out, Becky Lynch, with this bullshit fucking heel turn that doesn't just shows how lazy you are, and you just completely job out, Becky. Lynch, I just. I'm a scream again. I'm a scream, and it, well, it's gonna it's gonna blow. Up. I, I you're can't. scaring the person in this building right now. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. I, just, 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 I will just I will just think. You know, what? I just realized I can't even like think of most of Becky Lynch's matches because most of the matches that she won, it was back when she was doing her stupid Irish jig gimmick, and it's just like fuck. Yeah. So, so I can't even have happy moments because WWE won't let me be happy. Yeah, so let's move on to this fucking thing. <sighs> First, Roman Reigns versus the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Sheamus. All right, so the again, the stipulation for this match is Roman must win in under 5 minutes and 15 seconds to either take the belt or not, and for Dean Ambrose and the Usos to have their title matches at tables, ladders, and chairs. They couldn't even get anything, like, decent out of that 515 either. Four minutes and 15 seconds elapsed. Are you fucking kidding? It was four minutes, 15. Really? And Roman wins via disqualification because I believe it was... New Day. No, 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 but it wasn't. It was Rusev. Was it Rusev that caused the? Okay. Yes, it was Rusev because Roman's gonna go for the ua and the yeah. spear. Rusev grabs him by the legs and pulls him out of the ring. Oh uh, yeah, that causes the disqualification. And now we meet the new faction for the WWE. Kill me. Now here's the thing. I before, before... we start shitting on them. Hold on, I just want to say this: the idea of a group of slightly comedic heel villains from a pick and mix of different ne- countries and nationalities and ethnic backgrounds forming together as sort of like a protective circle for the you know heel world heavyweight champion and calling and calling themselves the fucking league of nations is completely a gimmick that would work in pro wrestling like gangbusters and is something i feel like i really should be in love with i mean for crying out, for crying out loud they call themselves the league of nations which is is I like. This should it. be gold. Except this should be a money angle. Yes. Except the characters that they have in this League of Nations are shit. The only ones, the only ones I give a crap about are the New Day, and I'm not saying this because they're you know the American characters in this group. I mean there is the problem of you call it the League of Nations and three people are from one country, but. Why are they in this group? Why do they care? Why would they... I mean, it's like, oh, well, they want to be near the World Heavyweight Champion. Even though they're a heel group, their whole gimmick is they basically love each other, and they're the tag champs, which is basically the equivalent to being the World Heavyweight Champion of tag team wrestling. On what level do they have a reason to give a shit about this? And then you just have, well, who else do we got? Sheamus. Joy. King Barrett. Kill me now. Rusev, Who? kill me twice. We've got the New Day, why are you here? And is that it? I could have sworn that's it, isn't it? You're forgetting one person. Oh, is it? oh yeah, Del Rio. Alberto Del Rio! So we can have Mex America on the Wrestling League of Nations. I just, it's the characters in it, it's how rushed and awkward this feels. It's. Everything surrounding it. it It's just, the concept is gangbusters. Like I said, it's a money angle. This should be hot fire, but it's not because it's too rushed. The characters either don't make sense for being in it or they're boring, pathetic waste of time that, or, you know, WWE's turned them into boring, pathetic waste of time. And it's just too rushed. I just, I, I don't care. Yeah. So, I said it was rushed twice. Wow, I'm so pissed at this angle, I can't even think straight. Yeah. So, 
the League of Nations. Are we sure that the New Day are actually with the League of Nations? Yeah, they are with the League of Nations. So it's a seven-man faction. Seven-man faction, again, whose gimmick is they're all a bunch of ba- squirrely bastards from different countries, but nearly half the group is represented by one country. Right. What the fuck? <laughs> so the League of Nations, including the New Day, Rusev, King Barrett, Sheamus, and Alberto Del Rio... Versus Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and the Usos. Which apparently they have dubbed this faction the family. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? They're calling them what? I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've, uh, I've heard rumors that this, no. uh, this team here is going to be called the family. The family. The family. Really? So, you know, we've had how many different factions that have had family in the name, how many different lineages and legacies and bloodlines, like the Anoa family, you know, Roman Reigns, The Rock, the Usos, all that, the Hart Dynasty. I mean, and on top of that, we might have another faction in WWE right now who has the word family. It's the Wyatt family. What the (laughs) fuck? Yeah, so that, <laughs> that's I'm not- okay. I'm okay. I was screaming into a sweatshirt at that time. <laughs> it's okay. I'm gonna. My, my throat is just gonna be shredded, <laughs> bloody chunks by the yeah. time this is over. So the League of Nations win over Reigns, D- D- Ambrose, and the Usos. All right, on a scale of one to ten, we do this every week. Monday Night Raw. Dead honest. Dead honest. Are you talking like my own personal rating on a 10 here? Two and a half. That's generous. Out of four. Two and a half out of 10. This. Compared to last week? Okay, compared to last. Compared to last week, I'll go with the four because last week was like a two flat. I, I will say <laughs> this. It's there that is high. no, no. There is no Monday Night Raw I have ever seen, no matter how bad it is, that I would actually hit the bottom of the barrel like a zero or a one. I just. I would definitely say like it this is what these last two weeks have been two of the worst raws I've ever, that I've seen in a long time and they were back to back and right after that one pay-per-view so it's just kind of <laughs> well the the ratings did go up a little bit this week from Monday Night Raw they kept Are you serious? Well they were up about an average of 204,000 viewers this really? week. Really? What yeah, how much so is that I up? Think- that's not much. I don't know the exact Nielsen ratings. It hasn't okay. been released yet because of the holiday. Oh yeah, um, that's right. so it, I actually do. I kind of, but here's and here's the thing. I'm actually kind of wondering because ratings usually dip this time of year anyway because the hol- it's the holiday season and it's football season. Those two always cut into the ratings. Right. Never to this extent. Never this much. But they always dip. So I'm kind of wondering if the dreaded but also very much expected reaction from Vince McMahon being, oh, well, you know, it's just football season. It's the holiday season. Which my response to that is, what happens when February rolls around? March, April, you know, post-Super Bowl, post-holidays. There's no football on TV. There's not really much going on in the sports world. Most of your TV shows are going to be in their winter breaks, um, there's no major film releases around that time. There's basically nothing entertainment, artistic, or pop culturally speaking to negate the ratings. So what's the excuse going to be then? And what's your excuse for why they're so low now when they've never tanked this hard? Yeah. And, you know, WWE actually... They need to change. I'm, I'm trying to pull it up here. They sent out an actual survey to fans... You've got to be shitting me. I'm not kidding. This is the this is the problem now. Ratings have gone so downhill because of the ratings nosedive yeah. on the website called a uh, fan council. WWE's fan council. How, what exactly is this website? It's just like a you can sign up for different serve or different groups, and they send you a survey about like TV and stuff. Like if you if you've been watching, if you're a diehard fan or something. Like uh, we're both we we both love Doctor Who, right? Right. So, like, they would have some, like, you know, 
who's your favorite doctor? Why? You know, right. Companion and, well, what, and all that. Like, like, for instance, uh, some of the questions on the survey, how often do you typically watch Raw? Who in your household all, also watches Raw? So every week. Me. In general, do you watch Monday Night Football? No. How well do you like each segment of Raw, including in-ring talking segments, backstage interviews, matches, video packages, well, superstar and diva entrances, and backstage interactions between the superstars? Well, pretty much not at all at this point. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then thinking about Raw episodes over the last few months following SummerSlam, how would you rate Raw on the following metrics? Let's do this one. All righty. Entertaining from start to finish. Is there like a like 1 to 5? One Let's ten? go here uh, 1 to 10. Like, okay, so 1 to 10. What's this first category again? Entertaining from start to finish. Remember, start to finish. So it's ba- so it's basically a grade of not not it, what is it keeping your attention for the full three. Yeah, it's hours. not even saying is it good because something bad can keep your attention. Is is it consistently doing whatever it's doing to keep your attention, good or bad? Right. In that case, like right after SummerSlam, I probably would actually have gone so high as to say like a seven, seven and a half. But at this point, I mean, it literally took me most of this week. I started watching Raw when it was airing on Monday. Finished literally when I got home this afternoon from my first job, and at this point, I'd probably say like a three or a four. Okay. Uh, quality of matches. See, that one's going to be all over the map, because even on crap raws and crap pay-per-views like what we've been getting, you'll still have a couple of matches here and there that aren't just good. They're kind of mind-blowing, and, but the rest of it will be absolute garbage, so it's... <sighs> Because it's not consistent, I'll go straight down the middle, maybe a little bit above, stick into the average territory, and we'll go six out of ten. Okay. Uh, typically, do you think each segment of, or each, do you think each of the following segments of Raw are given too much, not enough, or just the right amount of time? Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go with Diva and Superstar matches. <sighs> let's go with Diva matches. Honestly, these days I do think they are uh, most of the t- most instances of a Divas match they are given enough time. Now let's 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 uh let's go more into that quality of diva matches. It really does tend to fluctuate. I mean, as much as we bagged on them, and trust me, we did a lot, and very much deservedly so, bag on those you know team PCB, team bad, team whoever versus team whoever matches. Some of them, especially in the early running, were actually pretty good. Uh, several of the individual matches with Charlotte during her current Divas title reign have been pretty damn good. Uh, we've seen really solid Divas matches on Raw. It's just, it's again, it's really inconsistent because you'll have maybe a mind-blowing, oh my god, that was amazing. It has no point. The match was great. It affects absolutely nothing. So... Probably 5 out of 10, 6 out of 10 again. Well, is it, are, are they given too much, not enough, or just the right amount of time? Well, that's the thing is most of the time, most instances, again, I feel like they're given enough time. But, but it's for, the quality of... Yeah, it's... You know. And you can tell because a lot of these wrestlers are very, very good. You know, Paige, Charlotte, Becky, Sasha. But it's like the spots they're expected to do, the booking decisions, what they have to do. It's It, it feels like... Most wrestling matches are pretty much like 90% choreographed on the fly. It feels like the Divas matches are like 80% scripted. And that, I if, even if they're not, like it is the traditional, like most of this is on the fly, that is something that desperately needs to change. Because even when they're given enough time, it feels so overly scripted and pointless that, yeah. So again, I'm going to have to still stick with that five or six. Okay, yeah, so... Monday Night Raw, okay, it happened. Wrestling happened. Yeah, pretty much. So let's quickly go into our second set of NXT. Oh, God. Yes, so feel much, much better. better. <laughs> it's, it's like when you've got a really bad headache and you the Advil kicks in or when you've held your bladder for like an hour and you finally get to go. It's like, oh, thank God. Yeah, so let's start with Baron Corbin versus Ty Dillinger. Love the 10 gimmick. I actually love Baron Corbin as a heel. I can't believe I'm going to say this. Didn't care for this match. I mean, I didn't yeah, hate it. I mean, but yeah, it, was... it It felt really kind of gimmicky, especially... I am all about watching someone charge or jump or whatever 
fling, get their body at a high speed and some degree of an angle flying at Baron Corbin and he catches them and end of day, reverses into an end of days because that shit just looks really cool. Yeah. But there was something about the way they handled it in this match that it, and I know that you're always going to have even those couple of wrestling fans go, it is fake. Yes, yeah, so's a movie. The goal is to make it look and feel real. It looked like th- there's this guy in Uproxx, uh, Wisp Annex, Brandon Stroud. He does his best and worst of NXT and best and worst of Raw. And it, he likes to call, like, anytime someone just jumps off the turnbuckle at Randy Orton, you know, the guy who's basically built to grab you as you're falling and drop you on your head. I mean, he calls it the jumping nothing. He We basically get, for the finish of this match, jumping nothing reversed into end of days dead Ty Dillinger. Right. I mean, it was cool that they started no promo, no bullshit, just boom, match. But, I mean, I can respect the match, I respect the performers, but overall, for me personally, it did nothing. Yeah. So, next match, Divas match. My God. Keeping on her path of destruction, Nia Jax versus Blue Pants. She's back! I lo- I simultaneously miss her old theme of Cass just going da 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 with his you know Prices Right montage, <laughs> and I kind of dig the new one. Um, despite this is sound really hypocritical of me, but despite the fact that Nia Jax is still greener than both of the shirts I have with me tonight, <laughs> I really dug this. There is something. First off, I'm just gonna say this: I personally find Nia Jax very attractive. But there's also something kind of intimidating when she just sort of picks you someone up and it's like, wow, you know, she's you know, she's kind of green, but she's kind of good looking. Oh, God, that woman's back is broken or that leg drop where it just looks like, well, that person just got crushed. Well, Their head is now flat. She's dead. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty it's one. Of, it's like when Goldberg spears someone. It's like, well, they're dead. It's just there's something about it that really worked. And I don't know. There's just something about blue, blue pants is like the best jobber I've seen in a long time where she can basically take any move and make it look like it is either a hurting the hell out of her or b killing her. So yeah. this was great. I enjoyed this. It was kind of pointless, but I, I had fun. You remember what happened after the match too? Actually, no, I don't. Naya confronts Bailey in the back. That's right. And throws Bailey through a door. Oh my God. I had this simultaneous, it was the best thing because it was, I both, they were both kayfabe reactions like, holy shit, you threw Bailey through a, through a, I, I will kill you, you keep your hands off Bailey. <laughs> it was like that wonderful, you don't touch my baby face hero combination combined with, oh my God, someone got thrown through a door. <laughs> and it, like, it looked like she actually threw her through the door. It didn't look like it had like, you know, pop off hinges or anything because it just looked like. Okay, I'm grabbing you, and I'm going to set you down. No, nope, and just whipped her. For a second there, I thought it was a botch, and I was a little afraid yeah. for Bailey. <laughs> Which is, honestly, it's, it's kind of that nice little sweet spot of blurring the line. And now, thanks to that, all, that you know, <clears throat> you don't touch my baby face hero kind of reaction, I really, really want Nia Jax versus Bailey. Mostly because I think if they could get it to work, like get the two to cooperate in the right way, just think about this. If you can get a wrestler to cooperate, they can, you know, jump with a move and you won't even notice. Imagine a perfectly executed super Bailey to belly on Nia Jax for the win. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can picture that right now, can't you? I can you? picture it right it's now. It's kind of beautiful, isn't it? That's actually gorgeous. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's not going to be like when she does it to, like, say, Sasha Banks, where she can get her, like, from the turnbuckle all the way to the middle of the ring. This would ha- probably end up still fairly close to the turnbuckle, but at the same time, it's sort of like... You know, you're going to have the commentary crew like, no, she couldn't possibly. And then she hits it, and that crowd just goes Nuts. nuclear. <laughs> yes. Like The crowd doesn't go wild. The crowd actually starts exploding. <laughs> yeah. So the next match after the confrontation between Nia Jax and Bailey, Adam Rose coming down to the ring, no music, kind of awkward. Well, it's his party poop gimmick. <laughs> versus. kill me. Versus. The Cowboy! <laughs> I will say this. Part of me is slightly disappointed that he's not coming out to long necks and long necks and red, ne- red ugh, Now I can't talk. <laughs> long necks and red necks. There we go. But I do kind of dig his new theme. And I'm just going to say this. One of the reasons I used to watch TNA way back in the day and why I kind of still for a while up until probably like 2012, 13, it would at least keep up on news reports was because they had a couple of wrestlers I just fucking 
loved. James Storm is one of those wrestlers. And just like Samoa Joe is wrestling like he hasn't since at the soonest 2008, I haven't seen James Storm moving this fast, wrestling this well, and moving this motivated and playing with the crowd this much since like seven years ago. Yeah, it's really exciting, really exciting, except for especially for somebody in my point of view where I don't know much about James Storm. Oh, but dude, I, you I've are getting you are gone getting back. Tra- yeah, I've since gone back and watched some of James Storm's stuff and. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. You were, like I said, I was kind of worried, like, oh, he's going to be kind of schlumpy like Joe was after a while. And he comes back, and I'm like, oh, my God, it's the old cowboy. This is the best. The only thing that could be better is if they actually, like, brought in and, you know, reformed Beer Money in his old TNA tag team. I think at that point, I would just, you know, be like, die. Well, <laughs> I would die of happiness. Be like, I don't need to watch anything other than NXT and Lucha Underground ever again. Fuck all other forms of television. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, of course, James Storm wins with the last ride. One, two, three. Last call. Last call, excuse me. Yes. Yeah, it's right. like he's not the Undertaker. Man. Yes, that's right. The last call. I always get those mixed up. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. So, we. Uh, go to the back to an interview with Jason Jordan and Chad Gable. I loved this interview <laughs> yeah. so much. Yes, and they're talking about how they're they're about to face off against the VOD villains. The VOD villains come in and do a little thing with them, and then right before we go to break, they say, "Reading, ready, willing." I didn't even need to ask him that time. Yeah, <laughs> I love Chad Gable, though, especially that that little. That, I love bad jokes. It's like that. You know, it's like everyone's acting crazy. What's up with Full Sail University? There must be something in the water. Dead silence. Nothing. No, that didn't work. That wasn't funny. I thought it was funny. And just like, oh my God, I I love these two so much. <laughs> and that whole, you know what? Let's have a good match. You know, like that, oh my God, I wanted to hug this promo and give it Christmas presents. Yeah, this is the textbook definition of a good promo. Oh my God, yeah. So they say, ready? Willing. Oh, I didn't even have to ask you this thing. <laughs> and Gable, and then they, the Vaughn villains or uh, Aiden English says, and manly. And then they shake hands, and we cut the break. Meanwhile, I'm exploding with happiness and like kittens on my couch, like ah. <laughs> and that's sort of like, wait a minute. Then, I, then my brain calmed down for a second and realized that that promo was building to a Vaughn villains versus Jordan and Gable match, and I promptly died and had to be revived because it was just i i died there was too much joy and my heart is too small and withered and blackened mostly from wwe that i had to be <laughs> resuscitated because it's just like no no this 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 match it, it will clearly suck and then the match didn't jason jordan and chad gable versus aiden english and simon gotch the vaude villains i can die happy now this was an extremely good match <laughs> that was manly Oh, my God. This, yep. this whole match. Oh, so, yeah. This match ends with a grand amplitude for the win. The The real controversy mm. here after the match is Jason and Chad go for the handshake again. Don't get it. And the VOD villains turn away. <laughs> oh. I'm so conflicted. But it's a good kind of conflict. On the one hand, the heel turn makes perfect sense, especially eating all these losses. And come on, they're the VOD villains but on the other hand i don't want to boo them because i love them but that's that good conflict you want that kind of conflict where it's like i love this heel turn but i don't want to hate them it's just that's where you want your fans to be right and they've done such a good job turning jordan and gable into faces that having them turn heel especially the way they did kind of betraying their own you know chivalry principle uh chivalristic principles Oh, that the full sale crowd loves good stories and they love good characters. They are gonna boo them to death for all of the right reasons. Hey Seamus, this is how you get a heel reaction, bitch. <laughs> Alright, so the next match, another Divas match, Liv Morgan, one of the NXT newcomers, versus Emma. Do 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 is she still doing that weird thing? I uh, sort of like, especially since the theme music kind of goes, you know, right into the new heel remix kind of thing she's got going on. I know she used to still do the hand thing to her, even with the current theme, like for a little while. I think, I guess she's just dropped it. 
Yeah, so, of course, Emma wins this match actually pretty quickly. She wins by the Emma lock, but it's what happens afterwards. Ah! Emma, is, Emma is standing in the in the ring, uh, just extremely confident with herself, and she's looking out at uh, the crowd, and all of a sudden we see on the screen just somebody punching a, a punching bag, and Asuka... Peeks her head out from around the ring, and uh, of course, not to, not to be racist, of course, I'm just quoting what she says. She says, Emma, see you in London. And Done. then she's immediate, and the best part is she's got such great facial expressions. She's just smiling, but at the same time, it's this kind of adorable little smile that the rest of, that if you just look at the smile, it's like, wow, she's actually, you know, happy in this cute little wrestling girl. This is awesome. And then you pull back and see the rest of her face and you realize, <laughs> who's ever getting that look is going to die because <laughs> this yep. woman is unstable. And of course, this full sale crowd, Oscar's going to kill, kill you. you. Oscar's going to kill you. Yes. Which I, I, blank is going to kill you is and forever shall be one of the best wrestling chants ever. <laughs> and in this case... I, I think what we don't realize is like my own little head can here. What we don't realize is that if they'd pan the camera around or like showed you the other side of that bag, um, it's there's two things on it that are being attacked over and over. One is a picture of Emma with a target uh, bullseye over it, and the other one is a list of all of the wrestlers who have tragically died to the force <laughs> of Oscar's kicks. <laughs> one and Dana Brooke, even though. She isn't still, in fact, still alive. She's on that list because she got kicked to death, kicked so hard in the head, she forgot she lost. <laughs> also, yep. that little head pat when she goes back during their backstage interview, when she actually pats him on the head and goes, ah, I feel better. NXT loves its continuity and it makes me love NXT even more. Yes. <laughs> so we have an official NXT TakeOver London match Emma versus Asuka. Woo! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> it's going to be so great. I cannot wait. Because Emma is such a great heel that I hate her face a little bit. So I can't wait for Asuka to basically murder her with her own arms. Bash it in, yep. <laughs> it's just going to be like, sort of like, so we got Emma and the person who's going to be winning this match next. Uh, anyway. Yep. So we move on to the main event. Samoa Joe versus, oh, can you pronounce this name again for me? Uh, Tommaso. Tommaso Ciampa. Thank you. I can never pronounce it. Dude, it's from Wisconsin. I know, and Woo! I can never pronounce it. Tommaso, it's, uh, well, from what I understand, Ciampa is the correct pronunciation. Uh, one of the commentary guys says Ciampa or Ch- uh, or Ciampa sometimes. It's per- The correct pronunciation is Tommaso Ciampa. No idea what nationality that is, but. Right. And, of course, these two have never squared off in the ring, so that made for an At awesome match. At least in, match. you know, NXT. Right. Of course. Dear God, this match. Oh, just a straight message to Finn Balor. This was just straight up, I'm killing this man so that you understand what's coming kind of match. And it was just, <sighs> wrestling is so beautiful when it works. Right? <laughs> and this really was like, this started out even, and then as soon as... Uh, Joe got that whole corner slam thing. It was it went from being this dead even match to a mauling. Yeah. So this match, oh man, this match, <laughs> Mwah. beautiful, Mas- just, magnifique. Yes, it just featured both Joe and Tomasa. Thank you, and Champa. Just oh my god, the, the words cannot describe this this match. I mean, you, you want to name a talking point about a match? You know, you know the spots, the pacing, the ring psychology, whatever. This match just knocked it out of the. Is it the best NXT main event or even the best NXT match period ever? Oh no, it's not. But that's kind of like one of the high quality marks of NXT is that you can have a match. This good, the kind of thing you take your friend to, like, yeah, why do you watch that fake wrestling shit? You bring them over and you show them this match, and it's not the even the best match they're probably going to have this month. Right. That, that's the thing that works so well with NXT, is that NXT can produce quality program like that. And it's, the best word is you can have two matches that are completely different. You can have a match like this, and then you can have a match that's all about like comedy and character work or melodrama with some group like the Vaude Villains or Enzo and Cass or someone who's got more focused on their character. Right. And even though the wrestling's not as up to par, the two matches are on even footing in terms of quality because they are good in the ways that they need to be good. It's a showcase of different styles, different kinds of quality. It really is kind of one of those things where you just hold it up next to Raw and go... One of these things is how you do, don't do do it, and the other one is NXT. Right. So, 
Joe wins with a muscle muscle buster, a direct message to Finn Balor. That muscle if that buster happens is so on, brutal. If that happens on the 16th. I'm calling that as being over. Hashtag and new. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, there's no arguing that. That's how Hash, it Hashtag end. muscles busted. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, 1 to 10, NXT. I'm not going to go 10 or even 9. I'm going right. to stick it at an 8. Okay. Feel comfortable with 8. Yeah, you know, I'll stick right around, right around there. I don't want to give it a perfect score because as much as I want to, they can always improve. It, well, it, it, oh, damn it. Which which uh, show was it that had the Iron Woman match on it? Oh, that was NXT TakeOver Respect. I was going to say, it's not TakeOver Respect. Yeah, nothing can top. It's Matt, like on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you rate TakeOver Respect? 14? 1,400, maybe. <laughs> okay, fair point. It's over 9,000. There, I got that out of my system. <laughs> yep, so that is going to do it for the Squared Circle here today on Spreaker.com and iTunes. We're going to take off for the week. We'll see you next week. Enjoy Monday Night Raw and XT. Enjoy. We'll be back next week to make our predictions for the WWE. I'm sorry, not the WWE. The Squared Circle Podcast Heavyweight mm. Champion. Taking it back. Uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> I will not be denied. All right. Well, we are taking off here on Spreaker.com and iTunes. We will see you guys next week here on the Squared Circle. Have a great week in WWE, everybody. See you later.